any gym in the entire world, you walk in and you see someone squatting and the form is atrocious, the knees are wobbling, the glutes aren't engaged, it's not even going all the way down. The guy doesn't know what he's doing, but he probably has the face that looks like he does. Like he's like, oh yeah, you see that? I just moved three plates and it was like moving this much. He's, he's not getting the results he wants, you can tell. Then we have Anatoly, this guy, this guy when he gets under the bar, he makes sure his form is perfect. And I go as far to say as if he doesn't feel comfortable with his form in a given day, he just hops into something else. He knows that squats aren't worth the risk if you're not actually doing them properly. And that's going to work against his gains. So here's an actionable step for you. I, I really want to help you get here. I really want to help you grow your glutes. So open a notepad in your computer, a notepad in your phone, get a pen and paper and write down three glute exercises you're currently doing. If you're writing down more than three, that's actually an issue because we don't want to give the glutes too much volume. When we do that, we end up actually getting less results. You know, we need to stimulate it, but it gets to a point where the stimulus gets lower because of the fatigue incurred alongside it. We don't want that. Now, this might be a difficult step for you, but if you know what you're doing, if you can, right next to it, if it's a lengthened or shortened exercise. Now, this might be difficult to know. If you don't, don't worry, we'll explain things later and it'll be completely fine. And then today we're going to learn some stuff and we're going to work out if those exercises should stay, if we should switch them for something else. And that's kind of the purpose of this video because you know, I want to get you what you want. Okay, so the majority of the butt of the dumpy, whatever you want to call it, I'd, oh, this is awful, this is so cringe. The majority of it is kind of this lower part, right? Like this lower section here. And that's mainly grown through lengthened position movements. So this is something like a Romanian deadlift where that be with dumbbells or some sort of beast dance thing or good mornings or, you know, regular deadlifts. The idea is we're trying to lengthen the glutes as much as possible, which is why deadlifts probably wouldn't be something you'd want here. But these are the sort of lengthened movements we're looking for. Even squats to a certain extent will serve that purpose. You know, we can do variations on the leg press and stuff. But, you know, when we're talking about the butt, that's probably what people need to focus on, those lengthened movements. And then we'd probably end up having like one shortened position movement a week. And so these shortened position movements basically get that like kind of shelf at the top. So it's, it's not like a priority. You don't want to do a ton of this. But when it's a weakness or when you want to blow it up a little bit, yeah, you know, we want to be focused on it. We want to have it in our routine a bit. And so these shortened position movements are going to be stuff like step-ups. You're going to be stuff like hip thrusts, anything where you're you're not actually going too far down. Like if you've noticed when someone performs a hip thrust perfectly, the angle of their knees don't even go past like 45 degrees, not 45, 90 degrees. You get what I'm saying? It's a very, very small range of motion compared to something like an RDL or a squat where you're literally stretching the glute to its highest potential. So... How are we actually going to implement this? You see, we kind of have four sets a week. Training of good intensity, taking each set to failure, we only really have four glute focus sets a week. Now, I'm not going to say we can count squats as this, as squats are kind of a you know culmination of multiple different muscle groups. We probably would consider it more a, a quad bias, unless we were doing a glute bias squat. By that point, why would you? Because there's so many better things for the glutes, which would be done the same way. So essentially... We don't have to worry about squats being part of this volume. We only really need to focus on things like RDLs, those hip thrusts, um, you know, step ups, some sort of beast dance thing, and split this up the way you want. For me, I don't really care. <laughs> so when it comes like the shelf sort of thing, I just do two sets. So it'll be like two sets there and two sets on the length end, and it's kind of alternating that sort of thing. But for someone who's struggling more in a certain area, of course, allocate it more volume and the idea here is just we, we don't overtrain you know we want to get the maximum stimulus in this sort of bell curve but we want to stop up here we don't want to go down there where we just get less results and that's what I see a lot of people doing like I've seen people who will literally just go in the gym and they will do every single sort of glute exercise possible or they even set, supersetting it all and it's if if anything happens in the short term it's just inflammation it's, it's just all the blood pooling in there because the muscle's been worked and damaged a ton. It's not some sort of long-term growth. And 
that can be a little bit difficult to understand sometimes. And I, I've kind of glossed upon this earlier, but you got to train to failure. And a lot of these exercises you could consider difficult to train to failure, but there is always a way. With Romanian deadlifts, that's easy. If you fail, you're, you're good. You can just put it down. It's like a good morning. A bit more difficult, even though it's the same as an RDL. You, know, you have to use the safety bars. You've got to work out a way to make it safe. Because there's no way you're going to push to failure if you don't believe you can safely do it in an exercise. So that's kind of like a requirement. It's just like, you know, who cares about safety with hip thrusts? When you take hip thrust to failure, the last rep, if you can't get it, so what? You just put it down. Like, that's that's how you end anyway. So that, that's what I mean. Like, pick exercises which allow you to do it safely and comfortably or create some sort of safety mechanism, mechanism around it, like doing it in the squat rack or that sort of thing, maybe even using the Smith machine. These are all very, very good ways to do it. And in fact, using the Smith machine is an incredibly good way of making the exercise better, just because the more stable it is, the more we can get out of it, because we're actually like not having to worry about our stabilizers and we can fully focus on contracting the glutes and growing them. And a, a thing which I feel like I have to mention because a lot of people mess, mess this up is you have to stay in your active range. You see, some people make a huge, huge mistake. And this mistake you're probably making already. See, when you're doing these exercises, it's absolutely crucial to stay in your active range. Your active range is kind of like, you know, these exercises are basically performed by pushing your butt back. At least we're gonna talk about the length and position ones. The short and position ones you probably can't mess up in this sort of way. Because obviously we're not even we're not even going to a lengthened position really. It's quite a small range. But with these lengthened position movements, a lot of people, say, say this is like your, your thing, right? And you're, you're kind of, you're like stationary and then you're going back, right? Okay, so here's, so here's the problem people make. The movement's kind of done by just pushing your butt back. And when your butt can no longer go back, that's it. If you continue trying to lower the weight, all you're doing is putting a strain in your back. You're not even using the glutes. The glutes aren't getting more lengthened, they're fully lengthened. And when people do this, they end up getting less results and also getting a higher injury risk. And it's, it's just, that's not, it's not really something you want. Now, I want to reiterate, we could sit here and we could be like, well, you know, anything will grow the glutes so long as it's using that function. The glutes main function is to extend the hip. That's why everything you're doing is basically hip extension. And so, yeah, we could do any hip extension movement, but we want to be picking the best things for this, especially if you're on a video where you're learning how to grow your glutes. So I don't want to see people trying to put all their volume into squats or trying to put it all into some weird janky thing they saw on Instagram. It's just not gonna get the results. Trust me, it is not gonna work. And so just to give you like a few bullet points right at the end, like five steps that you can actually take and go away and be like, okay, this makes sense. I can come back to this one section and you know, I've understood the explanations beforehand. This is just almost like a reminder. So step one is you have to identify your current glute exercises and you gotta work out if they're lengthened or shortened because you don't want to do all in one and you definitely don't want to do all in shortened because your like biggest part of your glutes is just not getting hit. Now, you want to pick an exercise I mentioned in today's video. If you are a bit more knowledgeable, you can go out and you can research lengthen exercises, but understand the sort of things I mentioned which make something good and something bad because I really don't want you doing the wrong sort of lengthen exercise, you know, something you saw on like Pinterest or Instagram. It, it's, it's not going to be as good as you think. And so step three is, also, you know, choose a new shortened exercise. I'd really recommend step ups and hip thrust. Those two are probably gonna be the best bang for your buck. And so step four is commit to four glute focused sets a week. You can go up to six, I will permit this, but you can only go up to six if, if, you can only go up to six if you feel you're someone who needs a bit more. So I will just stick up four sets a week for a while, and then you can move up. And typically people won't actually need the additional two, but there are some who will actually do a little bit better with that additional thing. But anything above that is way too much. That is way too much for you. And so step five is, remember, set things up so you're safe. The worst thing for your long-term glute gains is getting injured and not being able to train them. And so if you found this guide useful and you wanna 
So if you found this guide useful and you want to make sure you don't miss out on any sort of videos like this, I never really mentioned this before, but that notification bell may actually be a really, really good way to stay in the know. Um, I don't like saying like subscribe, leave a like, that sort of stuff. But trust me when I say I'm going to be making a lot of videos, like trust me when I say I'm going to be making, trust me when I say I'm making a lot of videos soon, which you will not want to miss.